Hi, my name is Jim Anderson. I'm the U.S. Sales Manager at Harkin, and I am here in Pewaukee, Wisconsin, to discuss installation of our track. What we've been hearing recently is that the shipping cost has become almost prohibitive when it comes to the cost of the entire system and the installation of track. Obviously, it's ideal to install a long, continuous piece of track just because it's easier people don't always realize that we make it very easy to be able to splice track together. That not only helps on the front end when we're shipping the track and the cost of shipping those long lengths versus multiple shorter lengths, but should the track become damaged, it's easier to replace a shorter piece of track than the entire length of the track on the back of a mast, for instance. The mounting holes are 100 millimeters between the holes as standard. And so there's a 50 millimeter space between the end of the track and the next fastener hole. What we offer are splice links to help with the alignment of the track. They are the various sizes and these are simply for alignment. They're not for strength, they're for alignment of the track and they fit into the inside of the track like so, so that you can be assured that you have proper alignment between the two. As with any small part on a boat, when it comes to assembling anything, it's awful easy for one of these plastic splice links to fall overboard, and you don't want that to uh, ruin your installation job. So a simple workaround, which actually achieves the same um, ultimate goal is to find a couple dowels or every boat has a proper drill index a couple of drill bits which are the same diameter as the ball bearings in the track which will pl be placed on either side of the track at the splice to align them which is all we're doing with the splice link anyway so that can easily be done with spring clamps with vice grips or even uh, a C-clamp. So one either side, a set of vice grips, holding those together, maybe another one on, another, on the other side, a clamp such as this. Now we have our joined piece of track properly aligned and this method of splinting and aligning the two pieces of track guarantees that you'll have a proper installation. One thing we haven't talked about is the preparation of the surface. It may be um, obvious, but it doesn't hurt to mention that the surface ought to be flat and true that you're trying to fasten this track to. Uh, that will allow for it not only to be aligned properly, but not twisted or bent. Another thing to keep in mind is to drill the holes and fasten all of the fasteners um, hand tight to begin with and then tighten them all up together to the final torque. The reason for that is the underside of a flathead fastener fits nicely into the track, but that's a wedge. And if it's misaligned at all in terms of the hole relative the hole in the deck or in the back of the mast or the slug in the back of the mast compared to the track, this wedge will pull the track off center if it's misaligned. That's why the dowels and the splint keep them aligned properly while you're putting the final torque on the fasteners in the back of the mast. I hope this has answered some of the questions about installation of bat car and traveler tracks. I hope that I've also given you some tips as to what can make the installation that much easier. Don't hesitate to call us. We're happy to walk you through, answer any questions, and provide you with some of these uh, uh, informational tips along the way should you be installing and run into any, any problems.